Rainbow Six is not very friendly to new players. Not only do you have to learn all the maps and ridiculous angles, but you also have to learn how all 70-something operators work and how their abilities interact with each other. By using these 10 operators, you'll play much better and have more fun while you learn the basics of the game. These ops are both easy to use and very strong, making for great picks as a beginner. I also made sure that all of their dads were hot and sexy, so you know that their good genetics will help you out too. We're gonna go over how to play them, the best loadouts for you, and what counters you need to be aware of while playing. Them. That will set you up for a great start to learning the game and slamming kids in the process. At number 10, we have Jaeger. Jaeger is a solid beginner operator, having a simple yet effective gadget that passively helps the team throughout the round. He has three active defense systems or ADSs that can destroy a single enemy projectile out of the air and then recharge again after 10 seconds. They're best placed in areas that you're planning on playing in during the round, but they're also great for protecting team utility. Just make sure to place them in areas where they can't be easily shot by the attackers because they are not bullet. Proof. Kind of like Jaeger's dad, great genetics but not invincible. You can stack them all up for added safety or spread them out to cover more ground. As long as you place them all down during the prep phase, you're doing just fine. The more you play Siege, the more you'll learn the best positions to play as a defender and these are typically the best spots to put the ADSs too. His AR does a lot of damage and has fairly manageable recoil. I personally think the compensator is the best attachment for it, reducing the side to side recoil of the gun. As another note, I run vertical grip on every single gun as the time it takes to aim down your sights with the angle grip is only a little bit quicker, while the vertical grip drastically helps with the recoil control. Also, throw on the bulletproof camera as the observation blockers won't be much use against lower skilled players. Some of Jaeger's counters include Twitch, Brava, and Flores, who can all destroy the ADSs with their unique drones. Mute counters all three of these operators though, making for a nice addition to the team if you have a Jaeger already. And a nice addition to your attacking lineup is Thatcher, especially in combination with a Hard Breacher. Thatcher's gadget disables defender electronics for 15 seconds, including cameras and even gun reticles. He's best used for helping your hard breacher open up walls in order to create new entrances or new lines of sight. The more walls you open, the more pressure that's added to the defense and the more ground they have to cover. Running a buddy system and traveling around the map with your hard breacher is a great way to do this. Be careful though, the EMPs can get caught out by Jaeger ADSs, which will destroy them completely. While my disc can also drag the EMPs away, but they still go off and disable anything in the area. Aruni's Surya gates will also destroy the EMP device, but you can instead use it on the ground beside the gate to disable it along with any other traps on that entrance. If you have any extra EMPs left over, using them before you push in is a great way to not only disable any traps you may not see, but also to disable the enemy's reticles before you go in for the gunfight. This is the best way to maximize your advantage, which is the key to winning in Rainbow Six. The L8 is also a very strong weapon with very manageable recoil, especially with Flash Hider. If you struggle with recoil, then Thatcher is a top pick. He's not on this list, but his SAS comrade Sledge is also another great option with the same weapon and also has a hot dad. And if you have hot dad, send me a picture of him on Twitter or X. Tweet, 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 hot dad, mm, 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 so good. The second defender on this list is Legion. Legion's goo mines are traps that charge up over the course of the round. They can be placed around the map for information on various areas. If an attacker steps directly on the goo mine, they'll take some immediate damage, get a little bit of goo on their screen, if you know what I mean, followed up by more damage over time if they don't remove the mine from their foot. They'll also lose their ability to sprint until it's taken out. The mines have only one HP, however, being destroyed by a single bullet or a taser from Twitch's drones or Zero's cameras. You can even melee them if you're close enough. Finding a good balance between sneakiness with the mines and effectiveness is the key. I find that placing them under window hop-ins or on staircases works great. Putting them to the side of doorways or on common entrances near the site is also fairly effective. Because the mines let off a loud audio cue when they're stepped on, they're great information for where the attackers are coming from. As long as you recognize the sound and remember where you put them, you should be able to get some easy kills or at least not get caught by surprise. Remember, you don't have to actively watch the areas that your mines are covering so once they're placed down, watch the areas that you don't have covered by the mines. These take the pressure off of these other areas so that you can focus on other pressure points and avoid being shot in the back. Just remember to stay close enough that you'll actually be able to hear it if the enemy hits one of them. The T5 is one of the strongest defender weapons with very manageable recoil. The flash hider is the play on this one. Legion also has a secondary shotgun, allowing you to set up the bomb site or open hatches to escape on roams. The impact grenades are fantastic against shield players or just quick rotates on the fly throughout the round, and that's what 
what I would recommend using regardless of your skill level. The next Crazy. attacker is Ash. Ash is an icon of Rainbow Six with a breaching launcher that can destroy any bulletproof utility like shields and maestro cams. She can also destroy mirror windows, digging into the glass and shattering it. If you want maximum efficiency, then use the breach charges where you can in order to save your Ash charges for this bulletproof utility. The breach charges are also great to learn vertical control and what floors lead to where. That being said, claymores are also great as a beginner. You can place them on flanks or on window hopouts to protect yourself on a repel. Her G36C is my gun recommendation for her, having a 1.5 sight and some of the best recoil in the entire game. I love how it sounds with the suppressor, which also removes the bullet tracers, but if you're concerned about your recoil control, then use flash hider. For more damage, go with the R4C with the flash hider as well. She's a fast and aggressive operator who can enter the building for her team and rack up tons of kills. If you have good aim and prefer a run and gun style, then Ash is perfect for this. It might not be the ideal way to play the game, but as a beginner, you can get very far on this strategy alone. Her launcher can be caught by Jaeger ADSs and Wamidis, as well as Aruni gates, so make sure to drone before using it to avoid getting caught off by these. You might want to That's avoid weird. being caught off by That's frost mats as well, as they'll snap your knees over your forehead faster than you can say, I saw your genetically superior naked here, dad boy. last night. Come here, boy. I know you want it. I know you want it. Yes, you do, boy. Yeah. Frost is a power defender, having three bear traps that are undetected and yes, unaffected do, by yes, IQ scanner do, or EMP grenades. The only way to find them is with drones or your eyes, making them quite strong. They can be destroyed with explosives and bullets, but they have a little more health, so it will take a couple shots to break them. Oh. To play Frost effectively, place the traps underneath windows or ledges that attackers would typically hop in from. You can also place them on the platforms of staircases that attackers would walk up, as they should be aiming up the stairs looking for enemies and not at the ground for the Frost mat. Placing them right in the middle of the floor, however, isn't very good because it'll be a lot easier to spot out. You'll also want to play behind your trap so that you can finish off the downed attackers, otherwise they'll pull themselves out of it and be back in the fight. If you play in front of the traps, well, they're not going to help protect you, making for riskier play that isn't too smart or good. The nice part about the traps is that even if the attackers revive themselves out of it, they'll only have 20 HP left and won't be able to sprint for quite a while afterwards, leaving a blood trail wherever they go. Her gun has a bit lower rate of fire, but this also makes it much lower recoil than a lot of the others. Plus with the 1.5 sight, it's easier to land those headshots. With the secondary shotgun and the shield, you can set up some lethal solo strategies, making new lines of sight for yourself and having some great cover from the shield. Peeking up off the cracks of the shield makes for easy pre-fire kills and overall she's super well-rounded. The best part though is that she'll always be good, whether you're in the lowest rank in the game or the highest. Our next attacker is Nomad. Nomad is a control operator who's perfect for locking down areas and flanks in order to maintain pressure and collect kills. A good control player can utilize the map to their advantage, but that comes with time and practice. As a beginner, Nomad is perfect for holding flank or stopping jump outs and can land you with some easy kills. She has three air jabs, which have a decent sized radius. When a defender walks into the radius, the air jab launches them back onto the ground, leaving them immobilized for a couple of seconds. The air jabs are best placed directly above doorways, being the hardest spot to destroy them. They can be shot, tased, or impacted, so placing them in difficult to shoot locations is ideal. They also emit a ringing noise so locating them via sound is easy to do for the defenders. Despite that, you'll still get some enemies just flying through them without realizing that they're there. For all of these reasons, it's very important to be attentive to your air jabs so that you can not only capitalize on kills from them, but be ready in case they are destroyed or avoided by the defenders. Being overly attentive is just as bad though. Wasting your time and resources watching a flank that is already covered is not the best. In general, try to play around your air jabs without being exposed to the entrances on the other side of them. That way you can come out of cover to get a kill off of them if you need to, or at least use your gun to watch the flank after one gets destroyed. Remember, you only get three minutes during the round. Actively watching a flank that you have air jabbed already is counterproductive and a waste of time, so try to direct your attention to the next task once you have the air jabs down. For guns, the ARX with muzzle break is my go-to option, dealing a ton of damage with low recoil, while the AK-74 has a much bigger mag, lower damage, and more difficult recoil. I find with the AK that the attachments don't help very much, plus it sounds super good with the suppressor, so that's what I go with. Don't be scared to play around with the attachments on all these weapons in the shooting range and see what works best for you. Nomad is a little more complex than most of the operators on this list, but she's worth learning as she's super strong. And then we have Capcan. Capcan is one of the best beginner operators as he's incredibly simple yet super effective. If you've got bad aim, you're in luck because Capcan is one of the few operators that can simply get you free kills without having to do anything but place your gadget. His 9x19 VSN submachine gun 
Allen is also very low recoil, so he's perfect whether your aim is great or terrible. Don't use the sausage though, this is one of the worst shotguns in the entire game. On the SMG, I run Compensator along with the Reflex B in vertical grip. Sight preference is going to be completely up to you when it comes to the one-time sights. Not to mention, he's also got one of the best pistols in the entire game. When placing the traps, they'll go down wherever you're aiming, so crouching and looking at the bottom of the doorframe will place them away from head level where they'll be harder to spot out. Each trap does 60 damage, so if you stack three on a doorway, you've got yourself a nuclear bomb that will do 180 damage, disintegrating anyone who walks through it. With the other two traps on another doorway, you'll be able to instantly kill a one armor operator while a two armor attacker will get downed and a three armor will survive with five HP. This is why I recommend the three two strategy where you place three traps on one doorway and two on another to maximize your opportunities to get kills. You could spread them all out for info, but I find it less effective. Placing them around the site is great as the pressure and immediate threat of nearby defenders will cause players to forget to check doorways and potentially walk into their own death. If you're using them on a roam, play behind the traps and use them as cover from certain directions. Similar to Nomad and Legion, you don't have to actively watch the doorways that your traps are on as they'll either explode or you'll hear the enemy shoot to destroy them. Be wary though as Twitch can zap them quietly or even worse, Brava can hack them which could lead to you or your teammates getting clapped by your own traps. Number 3 is Ace. Ace is the best hard breacher in the entire game. He has the fastest breaching and the safest along with the hottest dad on this list. Ace's gadget can be used to open reinforced walls to not only create new powerful lines of sight onto the defenders but also to make new entrances into the building and around the map. He's especially useful because he can breach at range allowing you to open interior walls without having to put yourself in awkward positions. He's equipped with the AK-12, one of the best weapons in the entire game on which I use the flash hider once again. The claymore should be placed down ahead of time for runouts and hopouts especially when you're opening exterior walls. The selmas can be used for more than just that though. You can throw them onto shields to destroy them or even onto the floor to open up new angles that you didn't have before. They're also fairly loud so if you're about to push a defender or make a play you can throw one down beforehand to cover the audio of your footsteps or distract the defender. Using utility like this if you have it is always a good choice that can be the difference maker in a gunfight. Teaming up with Thatcher or another operator with EMP gadgets is almost necessary as the defending team will typically have a bandit Kate or mute to stop that wall from being opened. While Midas and Jaeger ADSs can also also grab the Selma charges, so be careful when using them inside the building. Then we have Ace's counter, Cade at number 2. Cade is super simple, yet extremely strong, being one of the top defenders in the entire game. He has two Electro Claws, which have a massive radius that electrify reinforced walls, hatches, and even other metal gadgets like barbed wire. He's simple in that you can just place your gadget down and forget about it, but there's still a skill ceiling that you can work towards if you practice playing around with the claws. Firstly, banning Thatcher is going to make him way better, as the massive range makes it difficult to guess with the EMP gadgets where the Kate Claw is going to be. But if Thatcher's on the board, then Kate tricking might be a good option, picking it up and replacing the Kate Claw once it gets EMP'd to reset the device and re-electrify the wall. It's a little bit complicated for a beginner video, but with practice, it's very easy to do. The other thing is that Thatcher throwing two EMPs will counter Kate tricking, so there are some layers there that you need to understand in order to know how to avoid being Kate tricked and avoid dying while attempting to do it yourself. If you want to lock down those walls even better, have a teammate run Tubero. That way he can freeze the wall while your claws are resetting, making it even more difficult for the attackers to open. Keeping exterior walls closed is a very strong strategy as it gives you less areas to worry about and you can keep your focus on the doorways and windows. Cade's counters include Thatcher, Twitch, and Brava, so watch out for those drones and maybe get a teammate to run Mute if you want some extra protection for your utility. The best beginner operator in the entire game is Buck. Buck is not only one of the strongest operators in the game, but his simplicity is unmatched. He's also especially strong for beginners in the fact that he can help learn the maps much quicker. Buck's ability is the skeleton key under barrel shotgun, which is great for both killing at close range and breaching soft walls and floors. Opening up random walls and floors around the map and experimenting with Buck will show you what leads to where and develop map awareness much quicker in your brain. He's also great for teaching you how to be aggressive, having the flashbangs to blind defenders before diving in on them with the skeleton key. Because his ability is simply a shotgun, he doesn't have any direct counters besides being killed, which is also the counter to literally everyone. When you're in those tight spaces, use the shotgun to give yourself the advantage. Aiming down your sights with it will tighten the spread and give you some extra range with it as well. When breaching, you'll mostly want to hip fire the shotgun to get a wider spread and open more area with it. The C8 does have a little bit of recoil because of the high fire rate, but that's also what makes it so lethal. Slam on the flash hider and hit the shooting range to give it a couple practice sprays and get good. You'll also want to make sure you have the laser sight on as it tightens the spread of the shotgun as well, making for easier hip fire kills 
and giving you a little more range. The hard breach tools are another nice secondary option if you want to run them instead of the flashbangs, but I practically am always using those flashes. Those are my top 10 beginner operators, but if you only want to play the best operators in the game, then go watch this video where I rank every single operator from worst to best. For more Rainbow Six tips, subscribe to the channel and good luck out there.